This is the Infinix 08. It's a new flagship quality budget Android smartphone available for roughly $250. It comes in three unique colors, black diamond, green diamond, and this version that I have, the silver diamond. Let's unbox this, run through the main specs and features, check out the camera capabilities on this, especially the ultra night mode, test the performance with some games, and let's dive straight in. Let's open the box. By the way, this design of the box is so unique. It actually reminds me of a perfume box. It's uh, pretty shiny. So there you can see the phone. Now, just there on the front, you see on the stickers the highlight specs. So you've got the 90 hertz refresh rate, 6.85 full HD plus smooth display. You've got a bit about the camera specs, which I'll cover in the video shortly. Now the processor is the Helio G90T, so you don't have the flagship Snapdragon ones, but that's absolutely fine. That's where they'll get most of the cost savings. It's a 128 gigabyte model with eight gigabytes of RAM, and it has 4,500 milliamp hour battery, which is great, and a massive 33 watt supercharge. So let's open up this phone and peel off the protective covers. So start with the front. Very nice. Now the shine on this is just amazing. As you can see, there's a lot of reflective rainbow colors on this, which I just think stands out quite uniquely. I really like this diamond shaped design. One thing I've noticed with a lot of the budget Android smartphones is that their designs are so unique, so much more than the actual flagship ones. So I have the iPhone 12 Pro and although it's just a simple plain Pacific blue color, these are the phones that really stand out and Compared to like the price points, it's so amazing. Let's see quickly what else is in the box. You've got yourself the SIM card tray pin there. Open this up. You've got a service card. And one other thing I really like about these budget smartphones is that they actually give you screen protectors so you don't have to buy these separately. So you've got a screen protector there and you have these really reflective shiny stickers. Look at that. This is so cool. I would actually put this somewhere. The future is now. Again, they also provide a clear silicone case, which is always good to have. Here you have yourself the USB-C charging cable, a pair of wired headphones, because this phone does have a headphone jack, and it also has a mic input as well, so you can uh, use this to talk on the phone. And then at the bottom, you got your 33 watt fast charger. So this is the plug adapter for the USB, but let's go ahead and dive into more about the phone. Now before I turn the phone on, let's just take a look at the design. It's actually quite slim and it's very lightweight compared to all my other phones that I've had. So on the right hand side, there's a couple of things here. You have the volume control there and then you have also a side mounted fingerprint scanner and this doubles up as the power button. So you hold that down to turn the device on. I will be testing at the fingerprint speeds on that as well. On the left hand side, you have yourself the SIM card tray, Nothing there on the top. On the bottom, you have yourself the headphone jack, the USB charging port, and then also a speaker there on the bottom right hand side. At the back, you can see this very nicely designed diamond shaped camera setup. It's a quad camera setup as well, and I'll be covering a lot more on the camera specifications shortly. So let's turn this on for the first time. There we go. Infinix, pretty nice logo animation there, XOS layered on top of Android OS. Let's go ahead and set this up. And we are in, pretty straightforward. So there is a whole bunch of pre-installed apps. I can see immediately there's a few games. I can see there's some social networks. So let's go ahead and test out to see the full capabilities of this phone. But first, let's run through some of the specs. So the phone is a 6.85 inch IPS LCD full HD screen. It has a 90 hertz refresh rate, like I mentioned earlier, and you get a 87% screen to body ratio due to that hole punch cutout for the front cameras. It also has 450 nits of brightness, which is actually not the brightest screen. I used to have a Google Pixel 4 XL, and this was roughly around the same brightness levels. In comparison, my iPhone 12 Pro can go up to 1200 nits of brightness. 
The battery is 4,500 milliamp hours, which will give you more than a day's usage, especially with the 90 hertz refresh rate always on. But you also have 33 watts of fast charging that gives you 50% off battery life in just 25 minutes. Inside the phone, you get the Helio G90T chipset, which is where you'll get most of the cost savings of this phone. And it also has a octa-core CPU with eight gigabytes of RAM. There's an inbuilt storage of 128 gigabytes, but you have the capability to expand this using the micro SD card slot, which also allows you to have dual SIM cards as well in the same slot. And finally, it runs off XOS 7, which is Infinix's own operating system. Externally, you have a headphone jack there at the bottom with the USB-C port and a single bottom firing speaker at its disposal, which means you only get mono audio. So you have four cameras at the back. The primary main wide camera is the 64 megapixel f1.9. This is the ultra night camera, which has an IMX686 sensor. You also have a 8 megapixel ultra wide camera that is also used for macro photography, and this operates at f2.3. Then you also have a dual 2 megapixel f2.4 camera for the depth of field on portrait and bokeh modes and also for ultra night video capture. All of the cameras are HDR mode ready and you can record video at 4K 30 frames per second. You have a dual camera for the front cameras, the first one being the primary 48 megapixel main wide camera f2.2. This allows you to also record video 4K at 30 frames per second. The second one is the 8 megapixel ultra wide camera, which is also f2.2, but it caps at 1080p at 30 frames per second for the video recording. And finally, in terms of the stabilization, you have EIS 3.0, which gives you ultra steady video recording. Now I think having the 90 Hertz refresh rate is pretty awesome. You can see here in the settings, it's on by default when you first turn on the phone. You can also turn it down for 60 Hertz to get longer battery life, or you can have automatic switch. So I'm gonna leave it as 90 Hertz because I think the experience when you're browsing the OS is a lot smoother, especially when you have a custom OS like this, which is XOS 7. It's built on top of the Android OS and generally you can get a lot of bloatware that's added. So I've noticed there's a lot of custom apps that have been added onto this phone as part of that. And having that 90 Hertz refresh rate would really go a long way. The OLED display and the screen itself, I think looks really nice. It really stands out, especially if you do have the brightness up if you do use this outdoors in broad sunlight, I think it might be a little bit difficult to see because of the lack of brightness inbuilt into the screen. 450 nits is not a lot. You might need to put the brightness to the maximum amount to try and see it outdoors in pure sunlight. But nonetheless, indoors it looks absolutely beautiful. One thing I really like to test with the refresh rates is to play some games. So there's a lot of custom games that actually are already pre-installed on this. They also have something called instant apps, which allows you to play some games here without installing them. So that's quite unique. Let me go ahead and see what I can play here. I'll just pick one of these. It actually opens it up in a browser so you can actually play games from the website. They're basically shortcuts to a gaming site. Let's see how it actually performs playing in the browser. So this is very much like Temple Run. Of course, this is a browser flash based game. And it's actually pretty responsive, I'm quite impressed. The screen is quite large, so you get to see everything and it gives you a good gaming experience. But what I really like to do is now test some real games that I've downloaded from the Google App Store. By the way, this also has its own app store called the Palm Store. So you can also get a lot of apps that are custom made for XOS. So you get a couple of options, but most of the time I would use everything from my Google account. So you have the Play Store app there. Now I've downloaded a few games, let's try them out. Right, Subway Surfers, let's test out the experience with this. So far so good. There's no lag, I can pretty much play this very smoothly. There's no jittering, there's no loss in colour, it's vibrant. And this game by all means is not a very high intensive game. So let me go ahead and try to play one of those and see how the performance comes out. Alright guys, so now let's try Call of Duty. So operating pretty well. It's working pretty well actually, I quite like the graphics here.
So far I've not experienced any issues with gameplay here. I'm pretty impressed with the way this is working. I wouldn't be able to tell the difference, to be honest, between this phone and using this. Sorry, just got into the game for a second. Now, I wouldn't be able to tell the difference between this phone and using it on a very high-end flagship phone. I think the performance has maintained very well. So I'm going to continue playing games on this, which I think is pretty good. So just for one more try, I'm going to change over and try a racing game and see how the performance is on that. All right, guys, and finally, this is Asphalt 9. I really love playing this game, so let me go ahead and see how the performance is on this. I think the colours along with the graphics, they just look great. Especially on this screen, which is a larger screen than most phones. Now there's a lot of things happening here and not once has it caused any issues in terms of performance. I'm still able to drift, I can crash, I can use the nose, and it pretty much works flawlessly. I don't have any other apps open in the background but once you do open a game like this the phone itself does open the game enhancement mode so it adjusts the sampling rates, the refresh rates and it makes everything work smoothly. I'm so happy I've had a couple of budget smartphones in this range before that have caused a little bit of lag with some games but this one I've not experienced any problems whatsoever so that is a big thumbs up from me. Now alongside with gaming one of the other key factors is the audio. So it does have a single speaker there at the bottom outputting mono audio sound so let's go ahead and see how the audio sounds by playing a YouTube video. Let's make it to the max. It's actually pretty good. It's quite loud to be honest compared to some of the other budget phones I've had. It actually does the job so if you are going to play some games or watch some videos out loud then you're pretty much going to get the experience that you're looking for. Obviously it doesn't have any punchy stereo sound or any type of surround sound, Dolby audio or anything like that. But for the price you pay I think it does a great job in that sense. So I'm okay with that. In terms of going back onto the XOS I've noticed a couple of cool things as well. You might find that there is a lot of bloatware on this, but there's actually some cool things I like about it. If you remember the Samsung Edge, you had these screens that bled around the edges, you also had a Edge screen that popped out. This can also do something similar, so from anywhere on either the left or the right hand side of the screen, you just drag and you hold for a couple of seconds and it opens up this type of sort of Edge screen. This gives you four buttons there on the left and you can create a shortcut to five apps however you like. So if you click on edit, you can adjust four tools there on the left for the buttons and then on the beeline if you switch tabs you can create up to nine so you can add let's say some games I can just tap to add, add the calculator let's add a whole bunch of things and see how it comes up so that is nine, let's close it, let me drag it from that side and you can scroll it from there I think that's just so convenient. I really miss using the edge screen when I used to have the Samsung phones. So I really like that. And of course, the final thing I really want to test out is the camera. The unique selling point of the camera here is the ultra night mode. So this is the back camera. Let me just swipe up to show you all the different modes that are available on this phone. So the ones I'm really going to test out, the default one is the AI cam. So this is just basically the general photography but they use AI to basically detect the scene and adjust the image accordingly to give you the best possible outcome. I'm also going to test the video. You have something called short video. This is basically a hands-free version of the Instagram story video capture. This will basically start a recording and it will stop after 15 seconds, which is perfect for you to use for Instagram stories. I'm also going to test the beauty mode, the bokeh, which is basically the portrait mode. 
if you switch to the front camera, the bokeh mode actually is called portrait mode, which is quite strange, but you have two different versions of that. And I'm also gonna test super night mode, which is basically the ultra night USP of this phone. These are very common features here. And lastly, I'm also just gonna have a quick test of the super macro mode there listed on the bottom right. I'll also test a couple of things from the front camera. So I'll also test the video, the portrait mode, and also to see how the audio comes out when I'm recording in video as well. So let's go ahead and dive into some of the photos and videos I've taken. Right, so starting off, all the photos that I've taken, we're available, I have taken with HDR mode turned on and in the max aspect ratio, which is 20 by five by nine. So the main photo mode on this phone is referred to as AI cam using the main 64 megabyte lens. It's pretty detailed, yet it's kind of what you expect when taking photos outdoors in good daylight. If you zoom in a little bit, you'll notice the details captured on my face are still pretty clear, although the sky has been exposed a little too much in my opinion, but overall not bad. I just tried to turn on beauty mode to see what happens here, and as you can see, it has made my skin smoother, but also tried to beautify the background with the trees in the distance and the parts of the bushes on the right hand side, as you can see. So I took a couple of photos indoors in more complex lighting. So the pic on the left is the full photo and the one on the right is the same one, but zoomed in so you can see more detail. Although it's not as sharp and comprehensive as flagship cameras, I still think it's vibrant enough to pass for taking good photos indoors. Here's another example focusing on my lamp, which has exposed it pretty well and adjusted the image so that the light is not so reflective, whereby you wouldn't be able to see the inside of the light bulb. And finally, a photo of this Christmas tree. The colors are vibrant, they're detailed and crisp. And I can't really find any faults worth mentioning here. Moving on to the portrait mode, or bokeh mode as it's known on this phone, I actually think it's done a good job picking up the edges of my body, even with me standing at two different distances from the camera in each of these pictures. So if I zoom these exact same pics in a little bit, you'll see it's done a pretty good job covering more than 95% of the entire edges of my face, cap and body. Now I wanted to test what the super night mode was all about. So I first took a picture using the AI cam at nighttime, then took the same shot using super night mode, which took about three to four seconds to take the shot, which you need to hold the phone really still for. As you can see, it's massive difference. It makes the image brighter, sharper, and more vibrant in color. The aim of this is so that you're able to see some details in the darker parts of the photos by increasing the exposure, the midtones, and slightly the saturation too. I was pretty happy with this mode and I would definitely explore this more in the future. In terms of the selfie AI cam, this is where I would say more improvement is needed. With HDR mode on, it really overexposed the sky behind me. I would have hoped that it would have adjusted the midtones a lot better than this result. But I thought, let me see the difference between the 48 megapixel main front camera on the left hand side, you can see, and the 8 megapixel wide angle camera on the right hand side here. The one on the left is clearly more detailed and you can see that in the stubble and the color of the jacket. Comparatively, take a look at the jacket in the photo on the right. You can see the contrast is looking pretty faded towards the bottom and the skin is a lot smoother. So I would recommend taking pics using the main front lens on this one. But here's an example of the main versus the wide shots, but indoors. As you can see with the main camera on the left, there's a lot more detail and less overexposure, as you can see from the detail in the ceiling, standing from the exact same position. In this one, I've noticed, however, that with the wide angle shot, although there's less sharpness, the color vibrance is much better, as you can see from my blue shirt, and the blacks are a lot deeper too. So a lot of this comes down to the type of lighting condition you're standing under, I reckon. So now I just wanted to try the selfie portrait mode. There is no HDR for the front portrait mode and this mode uses the lower resolution lens, but for some reason it always overexposes the sky, makes it incredibly bright, which lessens the impact of the bokeh effect. This also makes it harder to see the depth of field in some cases. Mm -hmm. 
Now moving on to the video. I shot two videos, one main lens at 4K and the ultra wide that can only be done at 1080p max, both on 30 frames per second. So I wanted to showcase here two things. Number one, how shaky the footage is because super steady mode was not on. And number two, the difference between how the video quality of both clips comes out. One thing you'll notice as soon as I play this is that the main 4K clip is so much more vibrant in color, as you can see from the windows of the building behind and the red of my car, as you can see here right now. Let's now compare with the stabilization on for the main lens. I was actually quite impressed how much smoother EIS 3.0 has made with this video. It's got pretty impressive stabilization in my opinion. All right guys, so I'm just testing out the audio. The front camera video quality is actually not too bad. Let me know what you guys think of the audio. Is it quite clear if you use this phone as a vlogging camera then would this be suitable so let me know down below and finally with macro mode i put spider-man on the floor and i wanted to see how closely i can take a picture of his spider logo on his chest and as you can see i'm pretty close to it as a result it managed to get a decent close-up shot with enough clarity to see or even read the tiny details. So that covers the review guys. In conclusion, why would I buy this? There's a few reasons. The first, the design of the phone looks amazing and it really stands out from the crowd. Next, the large full HD screen looks great when you're watching movies or playing games. And to be honest, even the gaming performance itself was very impressive. Next, I just wanted to highlight the battery life on this actually does last all day long. I have absolutely no problem having it fully charged in the morning and having it last up until the next morning. Also, the ultra night mode does a great job in capturing pictures in very low lighting conditions and making them quite vibrant and it doesn't take that long to capture. I also really like some of the small touches in the software on this OS. It ranges from the small things like the edge panels that you can swipe from any side of the screen, all the way up to the tiny details where you can see the Wi-Fi speeds in the menu bar. Lastly, but not least, the package you get in comparison to the price you pay, which is $250, it's no wonder that there's a lot of attention on this phone right now. So that is what impresses me the most. So the link is in the description of where you can find out more information on this phone. As usual, if you have any comments, ask them down below. I'll have plenty of more phone reviews in the future, so hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so already. Make sure to like this video, and I will catch you guys at the next one. Take care.